Why do HF transceivers run off 12 volts? The answer most likely is that's what cars use. A 12 volt lead acid battery has been standard for many years. When transistors came in, a major virtue was that they could easily operate direct off 12 volts without requiring a DC to DC converter. That made equipment simpler, cheaper and smaller and meant that transistors replaced valves in mobile equipment. Unfortunately, unless you're only building a QRP rig, 12 volts is not optimum for the power amplifier stages of an HF transmitter. I'll give you some reasons why. Let's say you're designing a transmitter with a 70 to 80 watt power output. Our final amplifier stage is around 60% efficient. That means you'll need around 120 watts DC input. With a 12 volt supply rail, that's a current draw of 10 amps which is quite a lot of current. It means that your conductors need to be thick, including those on the tracks of printed circuit boards, otherwise you'll get significant voltage drop. Even a regulated power supply won't fix it if your lead is too long between it and the transceiver's final stage. The resultant FMing and distortion is a particular risk if you're using a power amplifier stage with low voltage and high current. Another problem with a 12 volt final amplifier stage is that impedances can be very low. Given that you want an output impedance of 50 ohms and your low pass filter will probably be designed for that, you'll need some means of impedance transformation. Such big impedance transformations from a few ohms if not less up to 50 ohms makes design harder. Then there's distortion. Generally speaking, valve equipment was cleaner than solid state. Distortion is generally reduced if you operate transistors nearer to their optimum voltage, which can be higher than 12 volts. Another problem is that RF power amplifier transistors are expensive. Very often, the only transistors you can cheaply get are MOSFETs, things like the IRF510, IRF530, IRF540, etc. They work okay, but not necessarily at 12 volts. You might only get QRP power levels at that voltage. Whereas if you were to run them at 20, 30 or 40 volts, you'll get a lot more gain and significantly higher power output for no increase in complexity. So you can see that unless you're building a QRP rig, it's wise to use voltages higher than 12 volts if you're building an RF power amplifier. One issue with a higher final amplifier voltage is how you're going to power it. Most amateurs have a power supply that gives 12 or 14 volts at around 20 amps. That can power a commercially made 100 watt transceiver. However, if you do want to experiment with higher voltages, you'll need to make other arrangements for the power source. One of the innovations of the last 10 years has been continued development in battery technology. You can get batteries around 12 volts, which can provide much higher peak current outputs. However, they are often still around 12 volts, meaning that if you want to take advantage of the greater efficiency of a higher voltage fed RF power amplifier, then you'll need to put two of these batteries in series. That will give you around 24 volts. But note, if you connect 24 volts to the other parts of your transceiver, you'll most likely blow it up. So that needs to be done with caution. If you want to get the advantages of a higher supply voltage for a power amplifier, but still want to power off 12 volts, then an option is a DC to DC converter. They're a lot smaller and more efficient than they used to be. Here's one that I got cheaply off eBay and can deliver around 100 watts. Available for under $8 US, including free shipping. 12 volts input and 30 volts output, although you can vary it just by adjusting this potentiometer. There's not much to it. The toroid, electrolytic capacitors and power transistors are the most visible. A lot of the other control circuitry is very small and surface mount. With the converter, when there's no load, the LED is green. It goes to red when I'm drawing current from it. This is rated at around 100 watts. With a 30 watt transmitter, 
which draws around 50 watts DC input. This only got very slightly warm. These converters are switch mode power supplies and RF interference can be a concern. To minimise it, put this in its own enclosed metal box. As well, have ferrites and decoupling capacitors on the outputs and inputs to minimise RF noise transfer. Just to summarise, if you've shied away from building higher than 12 volt power amplifiers because you didn't have the required power supply, why not consider a DC to DC converter? They're much cheaper and smaller than they used to be and as a pre-built module you'll save a lot of time.